How is that even possible? It's thinner than my M1 MacBook Air. But why do I need a magnetic connector on a device that's stationary? I'm actually excited to see how it compares to the new M1 laptops, and I can't wait to show you the results. When Apple announced a new M1 iMac, people had a pretty strong reaction one way or another. If you're thinking about ordering this new, sleek, and powerful M1 iMac, wanna know more about the different configuration options, and need help finding the right option for you, you clicked on the right video. So let's look at the 2021 iMac, talk about the design, specs, new features, and price, and figure out if it's a device that you should order. The first thing that stands out about the M1 iMac is the new design and the new color options. Let's get color out of the way because that's the easy part. There are seven new colors, so blue, green, pink, silver, yellow, orange, and purple but not all of them are available in every configuration, which is something I don't quite understand and might frustrate some users. Now each design is also dual tone, so you're getting the more vibrant and saturated color on the back and the sides, while the stand and the chin are in a more muted tone. And don't worry, I'll come back to the chin. I know you wanna talk about it, we will. We've got white bezels on the front and the entire body of the iMac is only 11.5 millimeters thick. That's less than a half an inch. I think that's just like amazing. How is that even possible? It's thinner than my M1 MacBook Air. Okay, now to the big controversy, the chin. Oh, the chin. From my perspective, it's not something that bothers me. Like would the iMac have looked better and cleaner if it was just display? Sure, but we're getting an entire computer that's only 11.5 millimeters thick. So I'm not super worried about the little color panel on the front. I suppose if you did give me the option between getting a thicker display and no chin, then I would take that. So if that was an option, I would go that way. Like if they could have taken those components and put them behind and just made the whole thing smaller, I would have taken it, but it's just not something that bothers me. But I wouldn't have minded a thicker computer. Like 11.5, I can't even actually wait to see that in real life. I mean, I measured it, I know how, but to see that in real life, it's probably crazy to look at. Now, I would have also liked to see slightly smaller bezels and definitely an all black version, just like matte black stand, matte black back, sides, bezels, chin, if we need one, that would have just looked awesome. I just found out today that Dbrand, a company that specializes in skins, cases, and other accessories, came out with a set of skins and wraps which cover the bezels, the front, and body, and it will turn your iMac into something from like a Batman movie for $610. So it's gonna look sweet, but you know, $610, and then all you'll be left with is just a beautiful new display. And speaking of the display, the M1 iMac has a 24 inch 4.5K DCI-P3 Retina display. If you're not familiar with that term, it's a wider color gamut, which provides more accurate color reproduction. We've got 500 nits of brightness, so the same as the M1 MacBook Pro. And I do notice a difference between the 400 nits on the MacBook Air and the 500 on the MacBook Pro. So I am glad that they went with the brighter display on the iMac. This way it'll be able to handle brighter working environments. Now, Apple also included an anti-reflective coating and a true tone technology, which automatically adjusts the color temperature of the display to complement the ambient light. So white always appears to look white rather than yellow or blue. So whether you're watching a movie, checking out some YouTube videos or editing photos and videos, or if you're just using the iMac for productivity, this display should work great. If you've gotten value from this video so far, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And I see that over 90% of you are new viewers, so hit that subscribe button. Now I jokingly ask how it's possible that the iMac is so thin, but we know the answer to that. It's the M1 chip. Like the more efficient SOC or system on chip architecture is much less demanding in terms of power, and it's therefore able to operate within this thinner design. If you remember, Apple claimed that at just 10 watts, which is the thermal envelope for the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 chip can deliver up to two times the CPU performance of a comparable PC chip. Now I've already tested the M1 Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro, so I'm completely sold on the performance of the M1 chip, and I expect that the iMacs will perform at a similar level to the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini because they have an active cooling system, aka two fans, and that will kick on when needed to keep the system running cooler, and it'll prevent the M1 from throttling and reducing performance. If you watch my M1 MacBook Air versus MacBook Pro video, you saw that for the majority of users, this isn't really an issue, but if you need high level sustained performance for long periods of time, 
then the fans do help. Resource intensive tasks like rendering video can push your processor up to 100%, and after a few minutes, it's going to need to either throttle back performance in order to you know, prevent it from being damaged, or if it's possible, it can turn on fans and then quickly cool down. Now, another exciting update on the M1 iMac is the camera. And I complained about the cameras on the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro because we were still getting subpar 720p cameras in 2020. And even with these models, the new image signal processor on the M1 chip did help a ton with the image quality because of computational video. So in real time, it can adjust exposure, white balance, it can improve sharpness and detail, reduce noise or that grain that you see in your videos, and it can enhance dynamic range and a few other things that you don't really care about except for the fact that it improves the overall image quality. The issue is that the M1 chip is still limited by what the sensor is able to capture. So this new FaceTime HD camera gives us a higher resolution right off the bat, so 1080p instead of 720p. We're also getting a larger sensor which is able to capture more light for improved low light performance and get even better image quality. I'm actually excited to see how it compares to the new M1 laptops and I can't wait to show you the results. Now as far as audio, the microphone has been upgraded to a studio quality microphone, whatever that means, and it uses beamforming to focus on the front so it can help isolate your audio from the environment. What I really can't wait for is a new speaker system because I wanna see if I no longer need to have speakers on my desk. So if this new six speaker sound system can give me back some desktop real estate and still provide immersive audio, I think that's something that a lot of people haven't really considered in terms of value. Of course, no internal speakers are going to compete with larger dedicated monitors, but the iMac now supports spatial audio when playing video with Dolby Atmos, so I can't wait to test out the actual viewing experience. Going back to the overall look of the system, Apple also came out with color matched Magic Keyboards, Magic Mice, and Magic Trackpads. That way you can get a complete cohesive look. The new Magic Keyboard adds dedicated keys for spot Spotlight, dictation, do not disturb, and emoji, so you don't need to use shortcuts. I also love the addition of Touch ID on the new Magic Keyboard, so you can quickly unlock your Mac, use Apple Pay, and download apps without having to type your password. Now, since I got used to having that button on my two MacBooks, when I go to my Mac Mini, I always wish that I had that feature available, and now it looks like I'm gonna have it with the iMac. And of course, this brings up the topic of the whole ecosystem. If you're already using an iPhone or an iPad, adding a desktop computer fits right in and continues to streamline your workflow. I have a whole video dedicated to what I like about the Apple ecosystem and what I miss when I work on my main workstation. So if you're interested, check out that video when you're finished with this one. Now I wanna look at pricing and the different configuration options because it's not super straightforward. And there are three things to consider here, GPU, connectivity, and color, which really confused me. Just like with the MacBook Air, the iMac is available in two models and both of them have have an eight core CPU, but one has a seven core GPU starting at $1299, and the other has an eight core GPU starting at $1499. So are we paying 200 bucks for a single GPU core? No, with the seven core GPU version, Apple lists two Thunderbolt USB-C ports and the Magic Keyboard. With the eight core GPU version, Apple lists two Thunderbolt slash USB-4 ports, two USB-3 ports, a gigabit ethernet port integrated into the power cable, which I'll get to in a minute, and a Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. Now, I don't know if that's a misprint or if you actually don't get Touch ID with a seven core GPU model. That's important to know because Touch ID is a big feature and I really want it. Now, as far as connectivity, I don't plan on using an ethernet port because in our house, it just, I wouldn't have the ability to plug it where I'm gonna put the iMac. But if you do have that option and want the fastest connection, that would be a valuable feature. The added ports, again, depend on what you plan to do. I'll be adding a Thunderbolt hub and external SSD storage, so I don't see the need for the additional ports, again, for my specific use. I ran an M1 test with several external SSDs in this video right here, so if you're interested, make sure that you check it out when you're finished with this one. The last thing to consider is color. So the 1299 model is only available in blue, green, pink and silver. So if you want yellow, orange or purple, you already have to upgrade to the eight core CPU and eight core GPU version with upgraded ports. Now I wanna talk about the new magnetic power connector. I understand that it's easy to attach and I like the fact that the new color matched woven cable 
carries the signal from your ethernet cable, but why do I need a magnetic connector on a device that's stationary? That seems like something that would have been an awesome feature on my MacBooks where it would have replaced the older MagSafe, but on a desktop, it seems like an odd choice. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think the iMac is the right choice for someone who wants an all-in-one Mac desktop. Another option would be to get the Mac mini and then add your own monitor and keyboard, and you'd still leave you with enough cash for a mouse, a hub, and external SSD to help expand your storage options. Of course, if you want something portable, the two M1 MacBooks are great options, but I can't wait to use the iMac with a larger display, improved audio system, and I wanna see how much better this new camera is for video calls. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch one of these videos. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.